Hi everyone, thank you very much for coming to Savfest 2021. I'd like to thank uh, Dynamo and Accenture for putting on the event and sponsoring it. I'd also like to thank you guys for coming and, uh, you know, hopefully either learning something or contributing something with these talks or anything that's going on. So as you can see from what's right in front of us, we've got a bit of a cybersecurity and gaming talk going on here. Um, and what we're generally going to be covering is uh, some of the threats that are facing cybersecurity companies um, and, you know, gaming in general, um, as well as what motivates these kinds of people and, and what types of things they're after. So we'll we'll move on um, a little bit about myself first. Hi, uh, I'm Callum Duncan. Uh, you can see I'm the co-founder and slash technical director at Senko Cybersecurity. Um, I do some cyber awareness stuff, I do some web development stuff, uh, I do some security research stuff, I love rock climbing, um, I love uh, role playing games, Dungeons and Dragons, anything like that, as well as, you know, if I needed some gamer cred, I've got 4,500 hours on Steam, so, um, the, you know, there's a whole lot of time wasted there, or, you know, time gained, I suppose. Uh, and then if anyone wants to contact me after the talk, uh, those are some of my contact details and some of my, uh, some of my information. And usually, you know, my mission when I'm working with a company is to try and roll a natural 20 uh, on, on their network and get as, as deep in and, and, you know, try and hack them. That's, that's my job. Um, and hopefully, you know, improving their security posture by that and improve um, the company as a whole. So let's move into a bit of the content of the talk um, and try and discuss what type of things that, uh, you know, these hackers are targeting, why they're targeting them and what they're after, right? You look at the slide here, it's, it's almost always money or data. Um, now and then you'll run across someone who is disgruntled um, and, you know, just wants to cause damage for the sake of causing damage. Uh, but a lot of the time, you know, if, especially with the video game market, uh, it's worth something like 90 billion um, in 2020. So it's a huge amount of money that sort of flown around and, and that hasn't been tested for security yet. Um, and this is what we're slowly starting to see. Um, you know, money, data, anything you can get your hands on while you're there, because you're either going to sell what data you find or you you know, you, you're stealing actual money from them. Um, money is data, essentially. Uh, who? So what types of companies are they targeting? Um, they're targeting anyone, really. Uh, you find that a lot of games companies, video games companies are quite interconnected. Um, you know, a large company will subcontract to a smaller company for, say, particle effects or um, some graphic design. And they'll subcontract contract to these larger companies, which means that the supply chain for these large companies like EA or... Um, one of the big publishers can be extremely large um, and they're taking steps recently to ensure that their supply chains are secure. Um, they have some requirements for people, uh, you know, some requirements for companies that they work with, stuff like get a penetration test, um, ensure that you're meeting these standards, you know, ISO 27,000, um, et cetera. And, you know, all this kind of stuff is, slowly being worked its way in because of what's going on at the minute and the, the size of company doesn't really matter right you're going after the massive video game giants like um playstation network or steam and then you've also got like the, the smaller sort of indie companies that might subcontract if i can get into a subcontractor then i can go into these larger companies um or at least try and go into these larger companies there's, you know, it's there's a whole lot of wiggle room for a hacker or an attacker in these types of companies to to move up the chain, uh, which is what you don't want to be happening. Um, so we'll go on to sort of the three main types of, there's, you know, it's, it's separated into two types. You're either attacking the company or you're attacking their games. Um, game hacking is a, a massive thing, right? People like lots of money making cheats, aimbots, um, any any kind of thing that will give a player an advantage in the game uh you know so generally they sort of fall into these kind of three categories that we have here um hopefully those icons help but you've got your your game hacking so you're you're stealing uh you're getting 
wall hacks, aim bots, stuff that will give you an advantage over other players. And then you're usually selling them or putting them out there for free. Um, and, you know, there's huge black markets built around these game hacking, game botting scenes. Um, games like World of Warcraft have massive botting issues because their in-game economy is uh, so expansive that people will actually buy in-game gold, which leads us on to our second one, hacking accounts. Um, so people will go in and try and hack into different accounts for um, levels, for money, for um, in-game items, which can then be sold onto some kind of market or used to um, blackmail other people. And the, these items and these currency can be worth a lot if you, you really start trying to hack the people and you know get their passwords or log into their accounts and um, get that money that is... Um, extremely you know valuable in that world and then sell it on to say somebody that uh wants the highest level of account or wants these special items or wants some in-game currency for cheek cheap and then you've also got things like computer hacking um and this isn't necessarily hacking the companies but this could be finding exploits for the games themselves so that anybody using that game or playing that game can have their computer hacked um this is becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, a lot of frameworks that uh, games companies use, you know, uh, things like Source Engine and uh, other game engines are regularly updated to try and get rid of these types of things. But the older a game gets, the, the less it's updated, the less the engine's going to be updated, and the longer these vulnerabilities that would allow you to hack into a, another user's computer in the game um, are going to stick around. Um, and this is something that is getting quite a lot of attention, especially from the sort of hacking community at the minute, because these games, although they, they get sort of game tested and they make sure that everything works within the game, there's a lot of wiggle room there for someone to try and hack the other users of the game through the game and, and steal whatever they like from the users. Um, and then you, you, know, you have a, a bit of a fourth kind, which is where you go for the company directly. Um, which is what we were talking about earlier, where you, you're going for whatever assets that company owns, whether that's a website or some servers or a database, and you're going to try and break into that database and compromise the users that way, as opposed to trying to compromise their actual game client. Um, and a lot of people are, are trying to do this. Um, one of the things that might surprise a lot of people is nation states um, are trying to slip their way into this you think if you're a nation state and you have this ability to to hack a lot of people um, and to draw money one of the best ways to draw money out of these things especially in such a large market um, and not be traced too much is through hacking video games you know hacking thousands and thousands of accounts on video games uh, you know things like gambling sites and trying to hack as many people as possible to steal their in-game loot, um, and steal credit card information that they might have stored in, in, the, you know, in the video game or um, you know, trying to extract some of these, this monetary resource that these games companies have that generally people aren't especially dedicated to protect. You know, you think you, think you have an account from five years ago on a game that has some special items on it, suddenly that account could be worth a lot of money and, and you haven't changed the password in a while and, and someone just logs in and steals it. That's a lot of the time what these types of uh, countries are doing. And, and North Korea is a, a crazy example of this, right? They, they have so many uh, tariffs and um, sanctions against them that one of the ways that they try and extract wealth and, and, and uh, earn money is stealing things like cryptocurrencies, in-game items. They had a massive scandal a couple of years ago where they were going into Fortnite accounts and stealing V-Bucks and then selling them uh, to other, you know, selling the account or um, some, of the, some other in-game currency to other users. Um, and you can see that, you know, they're stealing 6 million from people or the um, the targeting game sites or they're infecting mobile games and then putting them on the app store and all these kinds of ways to extract wealth out of the industry because 
they you know they're having a hard time generating it or they they have some some form of issue and who you know what kind of hacker group or um nation state wouldn't want a bit more money right and especially in the gaming industry where the, the supply chains are so long that it's um the, there's so much attack surface there's so much footprint there that you can try and do whatever you please right um you can see if it works fingers crossed uh, and you know it's not just small companies getting hacked by uh, North Korea or or individuals getting hacked. You know all these companies on on this list have had some form of data stolen or have been hacked. You know CD Projekt Red most recently, um, EA, Sony. You know the source code taken from these companies that that literally the 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 most valuable thing, the most valuable asset they have is their brand and their IP. Right, because these games are extreme. That's what they make their money off, and they're getting broken into, um, usually ransomware, or someone will steal some data and steal their engine source code, steal their customer information, and through a number of different ways. Right, none of these companies have been attacked the same way. It's it's one of those things where the each company is uh, vulnerable in a different way and have dealt with or have had happen to them different outcomes um you know some of the worst being like we've just seen cd project red ea um sony had their networks knocked offline it's just every you know every games company out there can have these kinds of issues um so we've got a bit of a case study here uh, a lot of a lot of companies they use third-party tools. Subcontractors will be using third-party tools and uh, trying to manage their infrastructure that way. And one of the things that people don't realize is this is a, you know the EA hack which we're, we're going over um, doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional. You're hacking into one of those servers and you're stealing all of their data. Um, a lot of the time it comes down to individuals and people. Um, and this is exactly what happened with the EA, EA hack. Um, if anyone's familiar with the, the Slack, uh, it's a bit like Microsoft's Teams, but only text-based. And what happened was some some hackers posed as a um, as a EA employee to Slack because they knew they they had a Slack channel or they assumed they had a Slack channel, and they posed as an EA employee, gave them a little bit of information um, to sort of prove maybe that they were an EA employee. And what Slack did, they gave them. Um, access to one of the accounts in that channel. They gave them what's called a session token. Um, and they then put that in their Slack and that allowed them the ability to interact with the Slack channels that were there. You know, you message everyone in EA, send um, a director a message. And from that, you can then, um, you know, do things like phishing or um, even just drop a piece of malware on their Slack channel and hope someone clicks it. And that looks like what happened. Um, they dropped some malware in their Slack channel and then someone clicked it and they had their data stolen. They had their um, game engine stolen, I believe. Um, you know, loads of information leaked about upcoming games. They had huge amounts of um, customer data stolen and and what really went on there was a bit of a social engineering attack twice right you first you're asking nicely for a, for a, a slack channel or a slack account and then you're asking for um or hoping for someone to click it and and stealing the data that way um and there's a lot of uh wiggle room for these types of companies to to do that and and work that way um, because they, like I said, the footprint's so large, right? You wouldn't think of Slack as a subcontractor, um, and in a way, they sort of are, right? You you contracting a piece of your business as opposed to making your own chat application um, to a third party who you usually expect is secure, but the you know those people can can be an issue, um, and there's there's so much footprint and and scope there for an attacker that that's a, a, a one of the ways that oh why would they why would they even try and attack that and they did and they were successful, um, which is crazy. So we've got a bit of a recreation there.
right? And it's essentially what these hackers did was ask someone nicely to to let them through. Uh, and that's obviously from, from Doom. Anyone familiar with the game, like I said, it's a fantastic game. Um, and I think that's probably where we we will end it. Um, anyone with questions, you can either pop them in the chat or send me an email directly. I'd, I'd love to get into contact with you guys. Um, you know, things like game hacking and uh, game company security is, is one of my passions. So if anyone uh, is interested in that or wants to know more or even just wants to start a conversation, please uh, hit me up at that email or drop something in the chat. Thank you.